three, two, one, straight face. Well, that's an impossibility. So what we're going to do now, we, I'm going to just explain what Jim and I have put together in this kit. So, oh, I didn't notice that. So, yeah, the best thing for that is close in the bin. Sorry, in the bin? Yeah, we don't need that. Shot, yeah. So, over the years, Jim has been using various items or products of mine, but we decided to develop a range ideal for the wood turning market. So, what it's going to consist of is a double-sided precision credit card size stone, 300 grit coarse, 180 grit exceptionally coarse. This is a bit of a new stone and I'll just go into that in a little while. This is the round taper pen file, which is ideal for doing all the inside <coughs> of your gouges, flutes. flutes. And what I love about this is that if you are out and about, it's retractable and you keep it safe in that. It's a really neat unit. And you've been using one of these for about 20 years. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. So that's one of my favourite items because we'll get into this in a little while as well. Don't just use all this lot for wood turning tools. You can use this for scissors, pruners, etc. And this is the double sided machinists, which is 600 and 300. So we're just going to show you some of the applications of how we work with these and why it's going to be able to sort out a lot of your sharpening needs for your turning tools because the major thing that we're trying to achieve is to keep you going to the grinder all of the time. You're taking too much material from your tooling. Yeah, actually, I'll tell you what, that's uh, of um, all the demos, all the symposiums, the um, biggest, one of the biggest problems I find I would say about 80% of wood turners the world over struggle to sharpen the tools or to sharpen them to the correct profile. The beauty of this is, as you say, it doesn't take a lot of, uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, steel away. Uh, and so those guys who are less competent, shall we say, at sharpening, this is a, an ideal system. It's, ideal. Very easy, it's a very easy thing to work with. It's very simple and straightforward. It just takes a little bit of getting used to and also... <laughs> that made me laugh the way that voice went off. <laughs> Sweet. Have another cup of tea. <laughs> so, three, two, one. So, this stuff takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, as an example, I don't know if, um, I'm sure she won't mind me mentioning this, but uh, Jerry Richardson uh, bumped into oh, her. Oh, in England. Yeah, yeah, bumped into her a few times over the last few months and. I gave her some of this stuff to use and like I uh, checked with her about three or four hours later and I don't mind, you know, I think she won't mind me saying, she said, like, well, I haven't, I haven't really tried it. Like, people can tend to be a little bit frightened about trying something's new themselves just in case they're going to mess it all up. But if you actually get in there and try it, you'll be absolutely amazed how easy and straightforward it is. So, I'm going to just mention this credit card stone first. Um, the nice thing about all these credit card stones that I produce is that they're all double sided. They're twice as thick as any other on the market, so there's no flex in that whatsoever. That is not going to move because we're also going to show how we can do carbide inserts, um, which is important that you're working on something flat. So, in the past, the most popular one for me has always been the 600 grit and the 300 grit. The 300 grit is probably the most ideal grit size for your turning tools because it's giving that coarse sharp edge that we mentioned a bit earlier on. Um, however, quite a few of the professional wood turners over the last 18 months have been saying to me, and Jimmy did mention it to me, that they would like something that is a little bit coarser than the 300. I disagreed. I said, you don't need it because this stuff cuts so quick anyway. But I do listen to my customers, so about eight months ago, I produced this one which is a 300 grit, which is obviously the most important grit for the turners, but also a 180, which is exceptionally coarse. Now, I know you know Doug Thompson very well, yeah, good lad. and Doug wouldn't good mind lad. saying to me that he is not a diamond person, he's a grinding man, and if it doesn't produce sparks, it's not sharpening. That's right, yeah. But I showed this uh, to Doug when we had a prototype of six of these about five months ago, and I've never seen him so wowed or animated in all my life. And he's got some of these now, he absolutely adores them. And he's also said to me, I don't endorse many products, James, but I have no fear of endorsing that whatsoever, it's superb. 
So, well, that's why I am. Yeah. Thanks, Doug, for the envelopes in the post. <laughs> so that 180 grit is very, you know, just for putting a, a burr on a scraper, it will do that in sort Actually, of I'll like five or six Sorry to interrupt. How are the diamonds put on? This, I believe there's a several ways of doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which is the best way? Okay. So with, within diamond product, because there's a lot of stuff out there on the market, it's very confusing for people. There are two, basically two ways that diamond products are produced. They're either impregnated, which in simple terms means that you get a base material, put a layer of glue on it, you stick it to the surface. Glue. Glue. Adhesive. Okay, it's a glue. It's, so it's not Bonding. the nickel deal, it's the no, it's no, no, glue. No, no, just glue. Right, okay. that's, that's one way, which is sort of like what you call impregnated. Right. Or the other way is that that is put into a vat of nickel with the diamond in it. It's heated up to a certain temperature. You put a current through the vat. The nickel then is attracted, electroplated onto the surface, and the trick then is to grow the diamond. No, it isn't. It's to grow the nickel. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> but there again. <laughs> well, should have rehearsed this a lot. Hey, what do I know? <laughs> so the trick is then to grow the nickel around the diamond so it's two thirds buried in there and one third exposed. A so bit, like an iceberg. A bit like an iceberg. And when I did that, when I was demonstrating on that <laughs> cruise <laughs> last year, it, it went down like a lead balloon, didn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> on the Norwegian cruise, yeah, would, would it? <laughs> that was funny. So it's locked in there a bit like an iceberg, and your sharpening medium right. is just the top. It's expensive, complicated to do. That's and called electroplating. That's electroplating, and it's obviously the better way to do it because you get the longevity of the product. Right. There are two types of diamond used. There's a polycrystalline diamond that every time you go over the surface, it cracks off a new face. So it's what they actually term as self-sharpening diamond. Yeah, but the um, way, the Which way. wears down very, very quickly. And then the other one is monocrystalline diamond, which stays as a whole for a long, long time. So, you know, where I say if that's used professionally every day, and I mean professionally every day, I would expect that to do a minimum of a 10-year period, whereas some impregnated polycrystalline diamond products that I've tested and tried over the years, I've worn out within less than a day. So, same old adage, Jimmy, you get what you pay for. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah, yeah, I know that. So, that's the way that they're constructed. I'm going to steal your thunder now. That'll teach you to try and rehearse. So this is the fluid that we use on here. It's a petroleum-based synthetic product designed by an American company over 35 years ago in the engineering business to be used on diamond abrasives, period. It's brilliant stuff. It keeps it clean, it stops it clogging and prevents any rusting. You know, he was telling me just earlier, we were having a laugh about this. He got loads of people who thought that it was just water and he'd put some dye in water and it was just purely water and dye. It's amazing, the, the customers, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so, right, so that's what it is. So, uh, okay, and so I was told years and years ago, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was educated by James um, about diamonds and, and stuff, but I was told years ago you could use them dry um, or a little bit of WD-40 uh, to, to clean them out. Okay. So what's your views on that? And why so, is this just another product that you've added to, you know, make up the dollar or what? It pay for my house. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> but should we run some oh, sure. <laughs> See, So, going back to how that these are produced, we've got the diamond locked in there, two-thirds in nickel, one-third exposed. So, if you think about it, if you use that to dry, the craps, or oh, I use you, the crap, the, the craps, the, uh, the residue, the the filings the the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the bits what, from what the, the, the the swarf swarf do they understand swarf swarf, swarf. Yeah. so now that we've decided off camera what we're going to call the little little metal particles or the swarf of the uh, from when you're sharpening um, can you go from there have you got it now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay right, so so going back to what we were saying so we and I think hold on I think that bottle was there in was shot it? yeah I think it was about there. I think that was over there as well was it right okay cool so we've just got the top third there of the diamond. So if you use it dry, you're going to clog that up, um, which is obviously not a good thing. While we're mentioning that, a good way to clean these down, if need be, is using one of these, which is like a drawing office eraser. Right, yeah. For, for offense, <laughs> yeah. Over here. For the Americans, for England, it's a rubber. And if you can just pick that up, Mary, 
I'm just going to show you how effective that does clean that out. Oh, it does, it doesn't seem to do. And it just does really clean it out well. But you need to use the fluid and you need, need to use this lapping fluid. A lot of people will say, can I use water? If you use water, the biggest problem is, is the nickel is inherently porous. And if you've got water and you're leaving it on there and it's left damp, you're going to get rusting problems. There's no point in getting all these precision made and then going getting a little bit of a rust blemish on it. You might as well just throw it in the bin. One of the most common common comments I get coming back when I'm talking about the lapping fluid is can I use WD-40? Bless it. So I'm going to go over to the drawing board, Mary, if you'd like to follow me over there. I'm not very good at drawing, but I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to try and explain it to Jimmy as if he's a total idiot, which won't be too much of a problem. <laughs> so let's say that we've got... Believe it or not, that's, uh, I'm just trying to achieve, sort of... Uh, Are they uh, supposed to be diamonds? Yeah, a few of the diamonds, because they haven't been ground down too pretty. So remembering that we've got two-thirds buried in nickel. So that's, that's the nickel, and then that is the base. That's pretty good, actually. Very good. Right, so that's the diamond there. If you use WD-40, the biggest problem, believe it or not, it is too thick. The 600 grit fine stone that we've just been working on a little while ago, the size of diamond on there is 25 micron. So we have 25 micron from la to la. Okay? The top third is exposed, two thirds buried. So believe it or not, one third approximately is 8.33 reoccurring micron, which is from there to there. Still with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the biggest problem is, is that believe it or not, and I have problems with this word, so I had to cheat a little bit earlier on, so excuse me a minute. The viscosity... Viscosity. The viscosity... Brilliant, there you go. Viscosity of WD-40 is actually 17. So in other words, if you use something like WD-40, and that's about 17, so it just fills up yeah. in all these gaps, and overflows over the top, and basically what you do is just skate straight across the top. That's why you can't use WD-40. Why? Right. And you need that blue stuff. That blue stuff is superb. Also, with all of my range of products, if you use that fluid on them, they all have a minimum of a five-year guarantee. Oh, well, Nobody that's... else in the world offers a five-year guarantee on their diamond products, apart from me. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Right, mate. So, uh, so that's the story behind the fluid, and that you should use that on there. So we've shown them how to clean it. The fluid's important. Um, I guess we'll show them what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Merlin. Right. 